If you're in New York City's Grand Central Terminal, you're probably rushing from one place to the next. But if you take a minute to look up, you'll see stars. This is the John Pasmino from New York Skies Astronomy Inc. Okay, right above us, we have this, we're standing in the main concourse of Grand Central Terminal in front of one of the ticket windows. The ceiling above us is a 18th century motif of star chart that shows the zodiac from Aquarius through Cancer and a couple of adjacent constellations. It's the largest star map in human history, about 40 by 70 meters in size. But what really catches it, you know, catches my eye still is the color. You know, the color's just this really muted, and, and the stars don't really stand out, you know, the ones that aren't lit, and you have to look at it. So it, you can't just like walk by and see it and move on, like everything else in the city. You kind of have to stop, you know, and just look up. And this is like the hardest place in the universe to stop, because everyone's pushing you along and go this way, you know, you're late for a train. But you really have to stop, even if just for a second. And you look up and you see there's these stars, you know, and they're not real stars, and they're not, you know, we heard on the tour, they're not even realistic stars, but they're still the stars. When I was in New York before, I don't remember looking up at the ceiling. It's possible that I did. Um, now when, I, when somebody's telling me to look up, it focuses my attention, and I thought it was really beautiful. I particularly like the color more. That was what was really striking. I think we don't tell each other to look up as, mu as, as much as we could or need to. I do it a lot more now, even in, during the day. Just look up at the clouds. Just look up at the sun. Look up at everything. And even my friends now say, look up. Well, the marks along the ecliptic are roughly four day intervals of the sun's motion. It just happens to work out roughly that much. But it's, it's artistically modified a bit so that the constellation not precisely in the orientation on the sky. It's, it's a artistic interpretation of a medieval star map. In the medieval days and the Renaissance days, uh, star maps were very often printed in mirror image because there were sections of a star globe which is standing outside and in order that the stars be correct from inside where the Earth was, they were mirrored on the outside. So you get a small slice of that, like a, a map of the Earth, flattened out, and the stars are still backwards. So he probably just took from a book or a manuscript, tore it out, and said, hey, look, this, I'll, I'll use this for the, for the design. It looks nice. He didn't realize it was backwards. When the space age got started, of course, the Soviets beat us to it. They, they launched the Sputnik 1, Sputnik 2. Uh, so in November 1957, uh, the U.S. Army at the White House arranged all this, set up a Jupiter rocket, you know, Jupiter being one of the models of rocket, which the Army was pre preparing for our satellites. So they standing it up over there near that second stairway, which wasn't there back then. But there was a little fear that the thing could tip over, because it was just standing on its tail fins. So a hypothesis, although I have never found the proof, is that they cut a hole in the ceiling so they could tie a, uh, a, a wire cable to the, ceil uh, to the roof beams then tie it to the rocket so that it won't tip over. And then after the display was over, they left the hole there, they didn't bother fixing it. They use that now for publicity shots, uh, if there's a party or something, they take pictures of it from, the, uh, from up there. Well, it's the original paint, but they had to wash off all the gook and crap that settled on it with the rising warm air and smoke from tobacco everyone smoked in those days, uh, which just simply coated the place. They did take out the old bulbs and wires and they put it fiber optics. But after about 10 years, the fiber optics rotted out because it's up in the ceiling, probably the heat and the light, rain down on it or something, discolored. And now they use LEDs, I think 55 or something like that, or actually lighting. I think I was just surprised by all of them underground because, you know, New York you always think of as such a, a city, you know, that's always going up, you know. Uh, but at the same time, there's always so much of it is underground, you know. When you go to one place from another, you're just underground the whole time. 
Um, so that was really cool that there's, you know, not only the, the stars on the, the vault of Grand Central, but they're also buried in these like really weird spaces underground. And you have to really kind of find them. And, but that's a great metaphor for New York. Well, I'm not an official tour guide, I'm an astronomer. And the, of course, I work in the city, I pass through here, I eat lunch here, I visit friends in the area. Uh, so it was just natural that you take an interest in it. And the, the, the guide part is mainly for basically astronomers or those who are interested in astronomy. For Space.com, I'm Miriam Kramer. Space.com.